Hey everybody, I recently did a collaboration with Tronix Fix on building him the Altsman Game Boy. Now, this video is an extended edit of his video. Um, unfortunately, this build took weeks to do, and there was tons of footage, and it all had to get condensed down, so some things were left out. Now, what I'm going to try to do in this video is try to explain as much as I can for those things that might have been missed out that might cause confusion. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comments so I can answer them. But please just watch the video through because I might have answered it already. Anyways, take it away, Steve. I asked Richard from Video Game Restoration to build me the ultimate Game Boy, but I also challenged him to start with a broken one. So let's see what he comes up with. Steve asked me to build him the ultimate Game Boy. His two major requests were an upgraded screen and a rechargeable battery, but we're gonna go way above and beyond that and make it as best we can. So I paid way too much for this broken Game Boy that came straight from Japan. I did open this briefly just to make sure I wasn't scammed, but I haven't actually given a good look. This is a DMG Game Boy or a Dot Matrix game Game Boy. Um, this one is from the Play It Loud series, the, uh, the clear transparent shell. It's in rough condition. It's in pretty rough condition. So we're going to try to fix this and see if we can upgrade the heck out of it. All right. So right off the bat, I'm seeing some corrosion. And funny enough, um, there's moisture inside of this. In the moment of truth, nothing because these battery terminals are so corroded i'm going to assume that is my issue because uh, the corrosion isn't conductive so it's basically like putting a sheet of paper between your battery in the contact terminal there so what i'm going to try to do here is just to kind of bypass those battery terminals to see if it's actually those battery terminals or if there's another problem so we're going to try it with our desktop power supply and just bypass those terminals Now that I'm feeding six volts into this Game Boy via my desktop power supply, we're going to see if this turns on by just bypassing those battery terminals altogether. Oh, well, we had a power blink. So we had a red light for a second, an audio crack. And it could just be that these terminals are just not gripping too well. We'll try it again, though. Okay. There it goes. Okay, so we have a red light, um, but we're not getting anything else other than that okay so looking around i'm not seeing any obvious trace damage um there's no corrosion like gross corrosion on the board that would lead me to believe that anything else is wrong but we'll keep poking around and picking at it and seeing what we can come up with okay so i'm going to cheat a little bit because i've worked on quite a few of these and i've built up a a, quite a stash of piles. I'm going to try a different front board to see what happens. Now, if it works, then I know the backboard is good, um, and then we can start focusing on what's wrong with this one. And if it doesn't work, then I know I can isolate all my efforts into the rear board. All right, so we're going to plug in our backup front board here. Turn on our power supply, make sure nothing's shorted. Everything looks good. Try to keep that out of the way. There we go. And let's see what happens when we turn this board on. Ooh, all righty. That's a lot of lines and we're not getting any audio. All right, well, now we know that it is the rear board, which unfortunately makes things a little more difficult but nine times out of 10, not impossible. So let's find out. So I looked through those traces and I didn't see anything wrong. I didn't find any obvious corrosion and everything had continuity. So rather than just one problem, I might just happen to have two separate problems. Like my audio is not working. My screen's not working. Two separate issues. So I'm just going to troubleshoot those today and see if I can find anything wrong. Let's power this up. One of the main causes of audio not working um, would be a corroded headphone jack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen with headphones and see if I get any audio through them. Um, if I don't, then, you know, we're still back at square one, but we'll see. Nothing. I do get an audio pop and I have that kind of like that audio hum, like the very, very light hum, um, which tells me that the amp and the speaker were both getting power. I'm just not getting audio. So that's a bit of a problem. Okay, so I'm going to use a working screen or a screen that I know is working. 
So I have lines, horizontal lines. So I'm going to move back to thinking that this might be a singular problem causing both issues. All right, so I'm going to check some voltages around the board just to make sure everything adds up. Um, if it does, then we're still back at square one, or we haven't left square one, rather, and we'll just keep moving along and seeing what we can find. There we go. So, yeah, we have our six volts in the first one. This one should be, without looking, it's going to be zero. Yeah, because that's our ground. Uh, this one will be, like, negative 20-ish. Negative 23, 24, okay. And... Five, five volts. Okay, so the five volts so it should go to the CPU. So I'm just going to carefully flip this so I don't cross these, zap anything. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let's see, I'm going to just touch the CPU indicator here. And I have five volts going to the CPU. So that's good. The CPU is getting power. But we're still at square one. We haven't moved anywhere. So I'm just going to start checking random components. Maybe I can find a short and see if anything else is wrong. Nothing. Ooh. Okay, that one's shorted. I'll check the uh, ceramic capacitors. Nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing there. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, this is a small one here, nothing, okay, I've got a short on that one as well. Let's see, I'm just going to touch random uh, points here that are coming from the CPU and check them to ground to see if we get anything else that shorts out. Okay, so that's another via that shorts to ground. So, so far we have two. There's three that are shorting to ground. There's four. There's five. So we have five different pins coming from the CPU that are shorting out to ground. After finding those shorts to ground coming from the CPU, I'm going to bring out my oscilloscope and I'm going to test a working Game Boy versus the non-working Game Boy to see if I can see any differences coming from the CPU. Now, my knowledge on these isn't the most. I honestly am only able to basically compare a working one to a non-working one in spotting the difference. If you were to compare this to a human thing, this would be like an ECG, which is a heart monitor, probably more so an EEG, which is a brain monitor. Um, definitely not an EGG, which is just an egg. So I'm going to power this one up. This one has Tetris loaded into it. And I'm just going to check some of these pins here. Whoop. All right, we're getting some waveforms there. We're getting some waveforms there. Go to the third pin here. A couple waveforms there. All right, pin number five. We're getting some waveforms there. Okay, perfect. I have my non-working Game Boy connected and I'm going to check those same pins. So I have Tetris loaded here and we have voltage, but we don't have any signals. Again, voltage, no signals. Move to pin number three here. Nothing, no voltage. Pin number four, we have voltage, but no actual waveforms. Blinking a little bit, but not like the original one was in this pin five here. We have voltage again, but no massive waveforms. Well, this board is toast. RIP, um, press F for respects. Uh, it's super dead. We're still getting voltage, but we're not getting a signal. Ironically enough, that also exists in the human world. That's called pulseless electrical activity, where your heart is still sending an electrical activity, but it's not contracting or beating that's basically what this game boy is pea so she's done for i was given this game boy as a parts game boy and you can obviously see why it is severely water damaged with literally corrosion eating away a big chunk of the board here um the back even worse it's just almost like almost completely destroyed however we have a chip everything looks good but Let's plug it in and let's see what happens when we use this. And I'm going to plug in our main board here, pop in a game, and let's see if this works at all. 
Okay, nothing on screen. We have a uh, an audio ting though. Now, let's see if it will load a game. Nothing. All right. Let's see if we can solve this one. We'll start at the power board and we'll start working from there. So at the top of our power rail here, we should be getting five volts, but we're getting, oh, sorry, we should be getting six volts and it just blinked for a second there. There's six volts, this should be zero. This should be negative 17 to 20. We have positive 1.5. And then this should be five volts, which it is. Okay, so it looks like we might have a problem with our power board. Conveniently enough, off our broken one here, we can just swap that out. And we are upgrading the power board to a new one, so I could just use that. That came out nicely, so that's our good board. Put that off to the side. And we're going to pull out our old board or a bad board. It's still not, oh, there it goes. Just took some convincing. Ooh, that's super smoky with that flex. Apologize, it's gonna get a little loud. Do, 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 do. So this is the one we want. We're going to put this one in. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of flux. Just the smallest amount. I don't need a lot here. There we are. Quickly melt it. There we go. Tin this a little bit. There we are. Now, There we go. It's not the best soldering job. However, it doesn't need to be because I'm just gonna pull this off eventually anyhow and uh, put on the upgraded one. So we're gonna see if we get anything with the new power board installed. I have tons of copies of Tetris laying around just for this. Okay, so power is on. Oh, we have a screen, perfect. I do have a tester cart. I wonder if that will load. Okay, we have a logo this time. Perfect. It booted up. So with this uh, test board that I bought from Natalie the Nerd, I am able to test different components of the Game Boy to ensure that they're all working. As you can see, the screen um, has some lines through it. Super easy fix. We are upgrading the screen anyways, but I will clean this and fix it so I can send it off to Steve so he can do whatever he wants with it, whether he's going to sell it or whether he's going to use it for another Game Boy. His choice. So now that we know that we have a working Game Boy, I'm going to try the original screen here. I put on a new speaker just to see if this one's working. We're going to replace it anyways, but if it does work, uh, and we don't have to do any repairs, then I'm just going to send it back to see if he could do whatever he'd like with it. He could use it in another Game Boy. These can fetch a good price on eBay if you wanted to sell it, so we'll see what happens. We have the Nintendo logo, that's a plus. We have an audio chime, and it booted in my testing cart. So we're going to do an auto test on here. So it passed the RAM test. Um, it's going to do a screen test. There's no lines in the screen, which is very surprising. Um, it's a very common thing just to happen with these screens over time, especially with this one being as damaged as it was. It's kind of weird. So buttons are working. A and B. We have our left, right, up, down, select and start. Perfect. All those work. This is for a scroll. Oh, missed it. This is our audio test. 
I think it just froze and it reset. Okay, now I'm not sure if this is a power issue or if this is because I'm moving the screen around. A little weird. And it reset again. Weird. I wonder if the audio control is doing something. It keeps resetting, which is bizarre. So let's test it with the other screen. And I'm just going to see if I can imitate exactly what's happening here where it's going to reset. And yeah, it did the exact same thing. It's reset itself. Okay. So we have a resetting Game Boy now. It loads a game, but soon resets. Okay, let's check our voltages. Actually, you know what it could be? These battery terminals are also very corroded. Um, so I'm going to remove those and maybe do the same thing I did last time where I just solder a wire to it. And I'm just going to give it a generalized cleaning because it is disgusting. It's uh, covered in, in all this blue corrosion. So we'll try cleaning first and then we'll test all the voltages and remove those battery terminals. There it goes. So there's definitely some corrosion in the terminals here in the game or the, uh, the cartridge pin. So I'm going to have to give those a good cleaning. Um, that's definitely why it wasn't reading originally. And maybe the issue still is those, uh, those pins there. So let's clean those up as best we can. So I tried cleaning this to the best of my abilities with the corrosion that's in here. Now I wasn't really able to get in the pin connectors here. It's just really hard to get to, and it's just really stuck in there. So there is a ultimate cleaner when it comes to battery corrosion and that is vinegar. So what I'm going to do is submerge half of the board here in vinegar, and hopefully that'll eat it away. And while it's doing that, I'm also going to throw these battery terminals in that are corroded from one from this one and one from the original one, and just use the best one. Um, and I'll show like a close-up here of what vinegar does. So I'm not sure why vinegar has such a reaction with this battery acid. Look down in the comments. I'm sure someone way smarter than me can explain the chemistry behind it. But as for now, I'm just going to say it's magic and it works. Now, vinegar is not going to hurt the board in any way, but I do want to try to keep some of the components out just as a cautionary kind of, or just to be cautionary rather. And there we are. So those pins are fully submerged and this doesn't have to sit for long. It's not like an overnight thing. Probably within 10 minutes, I could come back to this and take it all out um, and just give it a good cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. It might still smell like vinegar, but that's okay. I'm going to move over to the shell now. Now, this is obviously pretty dirty. However, it's not very yellowed. Um, the bottom here, a little yellowed, so we might have to do a little bit of retrobriting. We'll kind of play that by ear. But what I need to do for this is cut out some of the picture here because the new screen that I'm putting in is, I think, 11% bigger. So this will kind of block off some of the screen. So... Conveniently enough, because this is a transparent shell, I'm going to get my new screen protector. I'm going to just lay it over. And then when I look through the shell, I'll be able to see the lines of the cutout and I'll just be able to trace them and then cut them out. Now that I have my screen marked out, I'm going to be able to cut it. Now my cutting doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because any miscuts or any like uh, rough cuts, I guess, will be hidden by the screen protector. I'll be hidden behind that blue. However, I'm gonna to try to make this as straight as I can, obviously, just for my own, you know, personal feeling, feeling goods. I don't know, my OCD. I don't wanna say that I have OCD. I just wanna feel good about it, I don't know. I like to cut these out with a Dremel. There's many ways of cutting these out. You can use a Dremel, you can use a, a crafting knife, um, you can use flush cutters. I just found this the quickest and easiest way. However, that being said, it can be a little dangerous, so we are gonna wear our eye protection, just to be sure. Okay, so with the Dremel, I was able to cut out a basic shape here, and I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, just get rid of some of these burrs, and I noticed a couple spots where I couldn't really get in the corners. Um, so I'm just gonna use some flush cutters and try to trim that out, and then I'll move to a crafting knife just to really um, clean it up. 
Let's see if that's all right, or if I have to go back and cut a bit more. And yes, we have to cut way more. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have it lined up. The, uh, the screen cutout, which I don't know if it's gonna appear on camera there, um, is inside the cutting that I've done on the outside. So that's perfect. So I finished soaking our Game Boy in vinegar, so hopefully that will clean up any corrosion that formed inside the pins. So just to rule everything out, I'm also going to replace all the capacitors on this before I retest it, and then we'll see if this thing still shuts off and has those power issues, or if it's working. Many hours later. Because I've been flip-flopping this board around, the uh, power board has broke off just like the audio board did. Again, pretty delicate wires. Even as I was removing these, they were kind of coming apart versus when I removed this connector from the other board, it slid out. There was no issues whatsoever. Um, so I'll blame both myself and the fact that it was a little corroded for doing it. We're just going to solder in this new connector or basically this connector from the original board and we're going to solder in our new power board, our upgraded one, to ensure that everything's running cleanly so when we give this our final test we know everything that we could possibly do or everything that we could possibly do has been done. So let's solder it all back together. Perfect. Now we should be able to test the board to see if it's functioning properly. What? Yes! Mm! We got lucky. We got super lucky. But it loads. Okay, let's test everything else then. So let's see the volume here. How high can that go? The volume wheel isn't doing anything at all. Oh yeah, looking at it, there is some dirt that's just kind of built up in there. So we might just have to replace or fix the uh, the contrast wheel. Luckily enough, is that a five pin? Yeah, I happen to get a few of those, or I happen to have gotten a few of those in the mail quite literally two days ago. So I'll be able to fix that. Okay, now let's finally get to do our test with Natalie's test carts. It's still booting. We're good. Okay, let's do our auto test. So RAM test has passed. Screen test. There's no lines. We're getting rid of the screen anyways. It doesn't matter. Those are all good. Press B for a scroll test. Oh, which one's B? Oh, A, B, I think it's this one. Yeah, perfect. Scroll's nice. Sound test. And we're not hearing any. Oh, well, the, the speaker just disconnected. So that's all right. But everything else in her test has passed. And more importantly, it didn't just shut off like it was doing. It stayed on. So I'm thinking that this contrast wheel is just dirty you can actually see the physical dirt on the inside there do that on the uh, microscope here as well so hopefully this is an easy one to clean if not we'll just swap it out for another part okay so the wheel is cleaned to the best of my abilities really Okay, let's try our audio again. Well, there's actual sound now. Like actual volume control, but not that much. Okay, let's swap out that contrast wheel. Okay, so we have our new potentiometer wheel. Now, unfortunately, with this new wheel, it's not as nice as the original wheel. It's a lot thinner. However, beggars can't be choosers in this situation.
Let's test our volume again. If this doesn't fix it, I'm not too sure where else it would lie because my first thought would be capacitors, but we've replaced those. That sounds better. We just need some sweet, sweet Tetris music. Oh, come on. Perfect. That was the issue. It was just a dirty contrast wheel or a corroded, rusted contrast wheel. Alrighty, let's move along. So we're going to get our shell and then our new screen. Now, I believe I have to modify the shell a bit more than I already have just to really ensure that this uh, screen fits in. And I'm just going to see how this fits in here. Nope, let's go this way. Nope, oh, here we go. Yeah, it'll fit in just like that. Perfect. Okay, so I do have to remove those little nubs. So I'm just going to get that seated in here. That's connected. Now I believe this is going to feed through like that. There we go. Now what I like to do is face the screen downwards so no particular or particulates rather fall onto it shoot i completely forgot about this part now i'm intentionally leaving that thing on there that way if i have to pull the screen off because of dust or anything of that like um, it's not stuck to it Now flip this over really quick and I'm just going to take a peek to make sure that there's nothing underneath the glass. Everything looks all right. Okay, perfect. Continuing on with the front board, I'm going to be installing this LED kit made by Natalie the Nerd. And basically what this is going to do is lay directly over top our buttons and it's going to light the buttons up from beneath. So before we attach this, we're going to solder on some wires. Now this is meant to go onto a regular board. So the fitment isn't exact when it's coming to this new board and the solder points that would you would find on an original board obviously aren't on this. So we have to run some wires. Butter flow. I think I could use some that's already on here. There we go. So we're going to tape this down. I just have some double-sided tape here, nothing special. Now, usually this would just solder directly to the board. Once it's all screwed together, it will be held into place by everything else. So this is just basically to help me install it. I'm gonna line this up as best I can. And there we are. Now I'll need to put the speakers, or pardon me, the stickers and everything in as well. But before that, I'm going to clean up the shell as best as I can. And these original letters, I'm going to get rid of. I'm also going to make those blue. And the reason I'm getting rid of all of them, rather than just trying to color match, is one, because I don't think I'll be able to perfectly match the font. I can get close, but if I put two different fonts beside each other, you'll notice right away. But if I have the same font over the whole thing, you won't notice at all. And because I'm eliminating all of the font or all of the original text, I can make it whatever color I want. So why not go with the color theme? So using my caliper, I was able to measure the size of the font here as well as up here to try to match that with a stencil so I can paint them on later. I also measured the size of the plate that the game cart slides into so I can put a nice Tektronix sticker on there. Tektronix, Tektronix. This little doomahickey right here is an audio amp, and this one's unique because it has an adjustable potentiometer, so I can either bring up the volume or bring it down to my desired level. Now, a lot of people would think that full blast is probably the best way to go. However, when you crank it way too high, sometimes you get audio interference or it just sounds terrible. So I'm going to try to find a happy medium of loud but clear audio. So I have my audio amp wired up here to the best of my abilities. Um, I glued these cords here together just to make it look a little neater. It's mostly going to be hidden underneath the front board, so it's not going to matter too much, but I just don't want them flailing out everywhere. 
So I'm just going to start running where uh, running my wires where they need to go, and we'll go from there. There we are. Now these last wires, we have these two that have to go to the audio board, or sorry, the front board. And then we have two that need to go to the speaker. Now, a little difficult because we need the front shell or the speaker inside the front shell with that on. And I don't want to do that just yet because I really need to clean this up before we go too far. So what I think I'm going to do, where's the old speaker? Okay, so we need to run our positive and our negative. That one's good. That one's good. Now, I do have a rechargeable battery here from Retro 6. I think they're the only ones that actually make these. And I'll have to put the cover on. Fingers crossed. We have audio. There we go. Perfect. Ugh. So many little problems. Now, what I want to do this for is to play with the potentiometer here. So the potentiometer right now is my volume control. So the volume's cranked. What I want is like loud, but not drowned out. So that's too good. There's like a, kind of like a ting to the music. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera. There we go. I think that will do it. Let's listen to the, the Game Boy ping really quick. Perfect. I like it. Okay, audio amps in. Now we can move to the front shell, put it all together, and we're done. I'm going to solder on a new speaker. This speaker is from Funny Playing. They're also the same company that made the new front board as well as the new LCD screen here. Now, if we look at the Game Boy itself, we can see that somebody has used something sharp to try to scrape off the G. Unfortunately, it left some deep scratches inside of the Game Boy, so we're going to try to buff those out. I'm going to use a fine grit sandpaper, do a little bit of wet sanding with 50% isopropyl alcohol. I don't want to use full water because I don't want to accidentally have some leak and damage anything electronic, but I don't want to use full alcohol because I just want a little bit more um, time with the, the moisture to really sand those parts out. Okay, so I've removed as much of those scratches as I can. It's not perfect, but it's the best I can do at this time. So I'm going to use a, I think it's a Melophone, but just magic eraser basically. And I'm going to take off the rest of the lettering and as well, I've kind of clouded the plastic with the Game Boy because of the sanding, unfortunately. So the Melophone is like basically a really, really, really fine sandpaper. You should always think of it as such when you're cleaning. So what I'm going to do is try to buff out any of those micro scratches that I've caused with the sandpaper. And I'm also going to try to take off some of the old lettering. The lettering is now completely gone. I have a little bit of polish here. This is literally just Scratch Doctor, like an auto body kind of thing. Um, I've used it on plastics pretty much since I started doing this and I've never had an issue. So I'm just going to do little circles here. Just kind of polish it up, which should really kind of get rid of any of that cloudiness. And just kind of make it nice and transparent once again. Perfect, that's a lot nicer. Okay, so we have clear buttons. These are just conductive pads. Okay, here comes the tricky part. How do I wire this all together now? All right, again, oh, it's just awkward. Here we go, here we go, this is it. This is it. That's it. That's it. Hmm. Okay, where's the screws? I need screws. <laughs> Anytime you're putting screws into plastic, Turn counterclockwise first until you feel or hear a pop. And then you know you're in the uh, the original threading, so you don't cross-thread it. Okay. I think I have it. I think I have it. Let's pop a battery in, or the battery in. Okay. Ooh, a lot of interference. 
A lot of interference. Okay. So the audio interference isn't changing, which makes me wonder if the volume is even changing. All right. Volume works. We just have that weird. I don't like that. Now, what's causing that? So I've been troubleshooting that audio hum and basically I replaced the power board with one of the original ones. I moved the power wire to the amp to a different five volt power source and I moved the ground wire. Now, I also put a new speaker on. Might as well cross everything off my list to see if it would work. Um, and so far, nothing. So what I'm gonna do is a little tricky thing here. I'm gonna add a capacitor to the power board and hopefully that's just gonna clean up the audio a little bit more by providing like a clean source of power, if you will. Um, so we're gonna try that. This is just a, what is it? A 470? Yeah, a 470 microfarad uh, capacitor. So we'll see if it works. So we have our power on, capacitors in. Nope. So another thing I did was I reset the ribbon inside of the screen or reset the ribbon that attaches the screen to the ribbon cable that attaches to the board. I reset all the ribbons basically and no change. So right now everything is pointing to the screen because I don't get audio hum if I disconnect the screen. Right now it's looking like I'm going to have to get a different screen. I tried troubleshooting this a bit more. I removed the amp, just hooked up a speaker directly to it. I removed the LED I put on. Nothing worked. I still had that audio interference unfortunately. So I had to order a new screen. Now, thanks to the magic of editing and YouTube, I guess, um, it's right here. Now, that's great because it happened in a few seconds, but in actuality, it was two and a half weeks of waiting. So this, this build's really taking a long time and I apologize. So yeah, we have a couple little things to do. So this is a red LED. Luckily, I ordered a blue LED that I didn't end up using. So what I'm gonna do is replace this red LED with the blue one. Now, another good part is the screen that's already in this Game Boy is the exact same screen. The board, however, the uh, the screen board as well as the front board are different. So we're gonna swap out those two, but I'm gonna leave the original screen in and just have this one put aside. It does not wanna give up this LED. I don't know, it's really weird. I'll let my solder heat up a little bit or my iron heat up a little bit actually. In the meantime, let's replace this original board with our new one there we are geez and we'll move over to this one here and it plugs in the exact same way little ribbon cable here okay the screen now fits in the bracket and it didn't take any amount of time at all or power tools so while i was also off camera i removed that stubborn led light I'm not sure which side is negative, which side's positive, if polarity matters at all. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wing it, and I'll put power to it. If it doesn't turn on, I'll pop it out, rotate it, and try it again. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just test this new screen in the LED, and our LED light isn't coming on. Okay, so it was in this way. I'm just going to rotate it. Pop it back in. Hopefully this works, so I don't have to do that again. Okay, that's plugged in. We have a working LED. All we needed, okay. Now, we have our new PCB here. Going to clean up. This board unfortunately came with, uh, with flux on it. So this is a High speedio or high spidu, high sp spido, anyways. Um, high speedio, I, th I think, is the name, which is it's kind of a knockoff of the funny junk, um, or sorry, pardon me, the funny playing screen, but it, it still works. It works pretty good. Um, some people prefer it compared to or prefer it over the funny playing one. Now, the funny playing one, I've never really had issues with. That was the first time I had an issue with a uh, funny playing screen. And just from looking around online and asking around, some people have had the same issue with that particular screen. So, oh well. 
So I'm just going to pause this right here for a second. This screen didn't work in this particular Game Boy for whatever reason. I tried everything that I could think of to eliminate any kind of audio hum. Now I did end up using this screen in a different Game Boy for my kids and it worked perfectly fine. So there must have been something with that original Game Boy that caused that audio interference. I just couldn't find it. Okay, now what we need to do really quick before we go too, too far is get Natalie's LED board. We're going to place this back on. I'm going to use oh, a bit more of the double-sided tape. There we are. That looks good. Okay, let's throw our buttons in. Boop. And we're going to use our funny playing speaker. There's a little notch in here that lets you put it in correctly. Perfect. So really, these are interchangeable. The polarity doesn't matter that much, but the one on the right, or pardon me, the one on my left is the negative one. So I'll, I'll try to keep that accurate at least. Make sure all my wires are out of the way. There we go. There we go. Looks good. Okay. So this is what it looks like right now. That's not too bad. So negative was on the left, I think I said, or the right. Okay. Which means I need to solder right into here. So theoretically, our audio should work. I should probably test that before I go much further. So we're going to pop this back in. This just makes it so much more easier to test rather than trying to put in batteries or try to hook it up to my desktop power supply. Yeah, let's try that again. See how loud that jingle is. That's good. I like it. You don't want it overpowering. I might have already said this, but the same person that made the LED board that I haven't turned on yet made my test cart here. Oh, didn't read. That's all right. I don't think I put it in all the way. There it goes. That feels better. Oh no, why? Don't do this. I hope it's just a cart thing. It might just be a cart thing. Okay. Why is that happening? So I ended last night by checking all the traces and everything seemed to work fine. So the only thing that leads me to believe is that the pin connector here is damaged or it's just too corroded. So I'm not even gonna try to repair that anymore. I, I tried picking at it a little bit last night to no avail. So I'm just going to replace the entire thing. I have my solder fan here because it's gonna smoke like a bugger. And I have my heat gun. So I'm just going to put a bunch of heat to this and hopefully just pry that off. Now what I do need to do before I do that is cover up some of these wires so they don't accidentally melt. This tape is just to ensure that I don't melt things I don't want melted. Um, so like these wires that are here and the battery terminal, not that the battery terminal will melt, but the solder will melt and it will eventually just kind of pop out. So just trying to save myself work, easy enough to put back in, but if I don't have to put it back in, why should I? Okay, so now we're going to use some solder wick and I'm just going to remove the flux or pardon me, the solder that I just put on here. We have our pin connector from our original Game Boy. Um, that's way cleaner than the one we originally had in this. So we're going to place it back and then individually solder each of these pins. 
So just push that down. Perfect. That looks pretty good. That's flush. Everything's pushed through. And then, yeah, I'm just going to go basically pin to pin with some solder and put it on. Here it is. I am so nervous because that was a buttload of work. And if this doesn't work, it was for nothing. We have our front board. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Mission accomplished. Now, I'm going to put this thing back together. Everything you folks have already seen, probably multiple times by now. Um, I'm going to do this quick before something else decides to go wrong. Okay, so I basically have it reassembled to the state it was in before I ended up having to go down that rabbit hole and figure out what was going on with it. So what we're going to do is actually... I think the last place I left off was I was going to adjust the screen. And let's adjust the screen. So as you can see, it's a yellow screen, but we have color change, so it doesn't really matter. That one's easy to see. I'm going to hold in the button. And we can move this to our vertical position here. And we're going to scroll, scroll, scroll until that's centered. Uh, nope, not yet. That looks, I'd say that's the ticket right there. Perfect, and while we're here, there's a pixel effect that I can put on um, that you know just kind of gives you more of a retro feel if you wanted that. So clear picture, retro picture, your choice. You can have a battery display to see how much juice you have left, which comes up in the top left. Uh, and of course you can adjust your color from here or you can adjust your brightness from here as well. Perfect, now that our screen is centered, let's put it all back together and we're almost like 99.8% done. Now, I'm going to attach this board inside here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape it down to the inside, right in the battery compartment here. That way you can see it, and it's also just kind of kept out of the way. But before I do that, I'm just going to now turn on my soldering iron. I'm going to solder on uh, my power and my ground for my LED boards. So I moved the camera there just so we can see a little bit more on the inside. So we have one wire here, which I'm just going to bend it in, try not to touch anything, try not to melt my own wires. There we are, I'm just gonna add a little more solder to that. Okay, quick tug there. These two wires are for the switch for the LEDs. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna hide that switch in the battery compartment. I'm going to feed these through into said battery compartment. There they are. So I'm just going to bring these wires over here and we're going to drop our battery in. Come on now. Go in. There it goes. Move our wires over. I think my problem right now is that I'm sticking to the battery. There we go. And there we are. Now, really quickly, we'll just make sure that everything turns on with the battery. Yep. Okay, perfect. Turn that off. And the final part. So this is, I believe it's a universal switch. I've never used it. Um, it's just literally been sitting around in my drawers here. So I'm just going to cut off these two little tabs because I don't need those. And basically, what I'm going to do is solder on these wires here. So I'm just going to shorten them just a tiny little bit. But this is going to allow you to turn the LEDs on for the buttons or turn them off. So we have our two little solder blobs on here. And I'm just going to put this Game Gear battery door 
down because I don't want to solder over a lithium battery. Things tend to go boom when there's heat associated with that or it just spurts out fire. Okay. Now this is going to be a very, very small piece of tape here. Should be able to tear it. There it goes. We'll push these in. I'm just going to move this cable a little bit out of the way. There we go. Okay, now, hopefully this worked. Okay, and there we are. Nice. And there we are. Now there's just a few little itty bitty tiny things to do really quick. I'm just going to give it another polish just because my fingerprints all, are all over it. And then I'm going to add on the text, like the button, like the A and B select start. So I thought this Game Boy was done. Um, I had the design for these decals sent off to my buddy and he sent them back. Unfortunately, there was a slight miscommunication. Uh, I wanted them in blue to kind of match everything else. They came in black. And when I tried to put them on, I realized that the font I was able to find wasn't a perfect match to the actual Game Boy font. And that putting on these water slide decals, they, they just look like a cheap sticker. So not too crazy about that. So I'm going to pull them off. Another big issue I found while I was testing it. So we have Tetris in here is actually i'll show you this first so So as it turns out, uh, this Game Boy has two separate audio channels or something of that effect as to what people told me on the internet. So I need to wire in a second audio feed into my amp. Unfortunately, with the amp I've chosen, there's not really a clear defined way of doing that. Someone on my Discord did tell me that you can put a resistor and a capacitor on there, but then that's just gonna look terrible uh, inside the uh, transparent case here. And then the potentiometer that adjusts the volume on here um, would be useless compared to that other audio channel so it would have two separate audio channels that would be different volumes so i'm going to replace the amp with a different one i have a few amps here because i did a video testing different amps and comparing them so hopefully i can also fix that audio uh, interference so here it is and next time you see it this will be gone and that amp will be replaced okay so i put in a new amp and I ran an extra wire over to try to get the dual audio and it didn't work and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working and I just kept messing with it to the point where I ended up damaging this extra amp that I was using. So I put it all back together and just excluded the amp altogether and I still had the same sound problem which tells me that it's the Game Boy's issue or which tells me that it's a problem with the Game Boy itself. So here we have our Game Boy. After doing a little bit of research I found out that this goes uh, or comes directly from the chip. So I brought out a Game Boy schematic here. And if you look right here at left out, right out, pin 59 and pin 60, they're going to run to a capacitor, a resistor, and then to my potentiometer wheel here and then out to the speaker. So by counting, starting here where this little arrow was, I went all the way around and I found my two points here. And then that led me to these two capacitors. So I'll just kind of so that one's good, that's good, and then this one is good as well. So from those capacitors, we're going to go to these two resistors. So that one was good, and this one, nothing. I have nothing. So if you look on the opposite side here, it's this trace right here, and I'm not getting anything. So for example, this is my other one, this is my resistor over here. So that's my resistor and that's my capacitor. So these two should work, but they don't. Now, the trace looks perfectly fine. So my only guess is a cold solder joint. So I'm going to try that um, just by basically reflowing. I might add a little bit of extra solder actually and see if that works. And if that doesn't work, I'll have to run a little wire. That's all. Oh, 
Okay. Let's see if that did the trick. Nothing. Okay, we'll have to run a little wire, that's all. Okay, so looking at this trace, there's no obvious damage. There's this little itty bitty point right there, but I don't think that's gonna cause me any issues. But we're going to solder this little itty bitty wire here, and then I'm just gonna cover it up with solder mask. Hmm, that's attached, but it's not like the best, so I'll go back once this side's attached. Okay, that's all right. It's not the best, but I think it'll work. Now, I don't think this would short out to anything just because these two points would short out to something sooner than this wire would be, especially because the wire is so small. But better safe than sorry, and this will just kind of help hold it into place as well. So, I forgot to mention that while I was trying to figure out the audio, I accidentally blew out my original speaker, my nice clear one. Um, in hindsight, very stupid to do. I should have used a tester speaker instead. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to use a standard black one for now because a, a new speaker would take about three weeks to arrive. And I, I've already delayed this project because it's taking me so dang long. So I'm going to try if both audios work here. Now, I realize that to the unknowing ear, I guess, if that's the wording, um, you're not going to recognize if this works or not, so you're just going to have to trust me. If the Tetris theme sounds right, I know it's a success. If you know the Tetris theme, you're good to go. And I have my mic over here. The jingle sounds a little different. Like, there's like a, a rattle almost to it. Fixed it! Okay. Let's try to solve the, the amp problem again. Um, I found a way online where someone suggested just wrapping the two audio inputs together into the amp. I'm going to try that. I have um, another amp I can attempt, and then I think a, a third amp. I'm surrounded by amps because I did that tester video. So, now, last time I said it, next time you see this Game Boy, it's going to be amplified with the proper sound, with the volume. So I put the new amp in. I ended up going with a blue amp um, simply because it's blue. That might anger some people picking an amp solely on the color. That might make people happy because it goes with the theme. Regardless, it sounds and works great. Uh, it actually eliminated that extra audio interference I had. And those two audio channels are blending nice. So I just have a couple little things left to do. And this Game Boy is finally finally done. So I'm just going to make sure that this charges, which it does. Perfect. Now, if there's ever an issue with the battery, I'm going to also include the original battery door and some terminals. That way, if he ever decides to go back or if there's an issue, he can easily replace it himself. Now, let's test it. So we have our color change. And our brightness control. Perfect. And this Game Boy is finally done. Tronix Fix asked me to make this Game Boy. And when he asked, how long do you think it's gonna take? And I was like, two hours tops. That was two months ago. Well, folks, that is it for me. I am so glad you joined me for this journey. Steve, thank you so much for the opportunity to build you your ultimate dream game gear. I hope you really, really enjoy it. I've got the box with the Game Boy from Richard. I have not seen this in person yet, so let's open it up and check it out. I'm super excited to see this. I think, is that snacks I saw? Oh my goodness. I might be more excited about the snacks. Just kidding, I'm kidding. We've got a Mr. Big Coffee Crisp Glossette Raisins, Black Forest Cake, Macintosh's Creamy Toffee, Swedish Berries, and Thrills. It still tastes like soap. 
That should be interesting. Okay, I had no idea he was gonna send all this candy, but thank you so much, Richard. That's awesome. Now let's get to the... Whoa, even more? Diabetes. Dude, you're gonna make me fill out this t-shirt of yours. Okay, let's get all the candy out and then have a look. I'm assuming the Game Boy's in here, so let's open this up and check it out. Okay, I am so excited to see this thing. It's packed in there pretty well. Wow, look at this. So, we ready? Even got a little desiccant pack. I feel like this is like pro-level packaging right here. Wow. Look at that. That is so nice. All nice and clean. Nice new screen protector on here. Look at that, he's even got my logo on there. That is so cool. Okay, and we've got the USB-C charging. That's one thing specifically I asked for. That's amazing. Okay, let's turn it on though. See if it's got enough charge to turn on. Oh, uh, look at this. Got the matching blue LEDs. That screen looks so good. And we've got the changing color screen. And the contrast changes. This is so nice. Okay, let me put a game in and let's try and play a game. We're gonna go with some Donkey Kong. Let's try it out. This is just so fancy. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, here we go. So much easier to see everything. Oh, so much easier to see myself die. Okay, that's enough playing for now. I do want to check one more thing. I want to see this thing charge. And here we go, plugging in the charger. Of course, we got a blue LED. This thing is awesome. All the LEDs are blue, the buttons are blue. Such a cool Ultimate Game Boy. Richard, I think you knocked it out of the park. Thank you so much. If anybody else wants to check out my stuff, I'm on YouTube here under Video Game Restoration, TikTok, Instagram. I'm also on Twitter, website, videogamerestoration.com. Um, and until then, let's save the consoles.